Welcome to this course on architecting software for the cloud. In this lecture what we would like to do is to take a small problem and illustrate how the advent of the cloud platform has given us architecting options. Let us say we are interested in building a course registration website like the one which you have uh, used to register for this particular course. Essentially there are a set of users anywhere in the cloud and uh, they need to register for the course. So the system will ask for some information from the user that is what we call in capturing participant details and then it will send a confirmation email. How will we build this system? So a simple way to do this is I use some uh, application stack like a LAMP stack that is Linux Apache my SQL PHP uh, stack. So I have a web server and uh, the, 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 app, the PHP engine is part of the web server here and uh, there is a database engine which is the MySQL uh, database engine and I write some PHP code and some SQL code and all this is put on a machine which is in my in my office or in my lab or in my data center right which is what I am calling in house server deployment and the users from anywhere in the internet are going to access it through a browser. This is how we have been building systems before the advent of the cloud. Now one option that has cropped up because of this cloud platforms becoming dominant is instead of having an in house machine. I actually buy a virtual machine in the cloud. My software does not change, it is the same software that I have written but instead of, instead of deploying it on my local machine, I buy a virtual machine from a cloud service provider for example from Amazon let us say and deploy the same software there. So this is a new option that I have. Another possible option is instead of buying a bare virtual machine, I can go to a service provider who gives me apart from a Linux box, gives me a MySQL instance and PHP installed on it. So what he is providing me is a prompt at a slightly higher level of abstraction. So he takes care of installing the SQL database, MySQL database, he takes care of configuring the PHP and so on. So in the earlier case I needed to install PHP MySQL myself but in this case, in the second case that we are talking about, I just go and put my PHP programs there. I do not need to configure the PHP MySQL system, right. So this looks even easier than the earlier one to do. So another option is by using a service like uh, Google Forms it is called software as a service. Uh, so here in this uh, particular option you may not be required to do much of a coding per se. You do not have to set up any database server or any, any application server uh, etc. Uh, so this thing this uh, whole bundle is given to you as a service software as a service where you can create let us say your registration form uh, by using the standard UI that Google Forms provides and you can specify your fields that you want to capture for each registrant. Uh, and and it gives you a URL and that you can pass on to the users where they can access the form and fill it in. Okay, so we have four options. Now, how do they differ from each other? First thing to note is for the end user, it doesn't matter whether it is running on Google Forms, whether the machine is local to the end users, uh, the, to the uh, to the to the lab or sitting in the cloud somewhere, or whether it is. Uh, virtual machine or not the user does not really care. Right. So mainly the differences that uh, are there in these options lie in under the hood details of how you design your solution, how you architect your solution. For example, uh, some of the some of the features like disaster recovery let us say is easier to, to build in the option uh, B than in the option A. Option A was the conventional non-cloud based platforms. Uh, whereas B was taking a virtual machine in Amazon like cloud. So the cloud platform itself provides you some basic services of which, which make it easy to, to have uh, your disaster recovery built into your solution. Similarly, the provisioning time 
like the time it takes to to uh, set up your environment where you deploy your application uh, is is near zero in in um, uh, platform as a service for example than in the conventional uh, non cloud based platform because you don't have to uh, provision the hardware you don't have to configure the operating system and so on uh, so that is already taken care by by the cloud pass cloud provider uh, similarly, if you look at the last option, uh, software as service, there is apparently no coding at, involved at all. All you have to do is a little bit of a configuration uh, to set up the registration forms mm -hmm. and uh, that that's pretty much it. So in that sense, there is almost negligible coding effort in software as a service. So we see that we have these four different options and they are giving us some aspects which are different from each other. Okay? These are actually called quality attributes. And we will see about this quality attributes in greater detail in uh, during the rest of the course. So this lecture, lecture is to let you uh, to introduce you to the various architecting options that have come up because of the advent of cloud platforms and variants of cloud platforms and to just to show you an example of how they differ from each other. What we would like you to do is to now think of other ways of building the same application, deploying the same application and then ask how do these different variants differ from each other, on what aspects of the solution do they differ from each other. So this is a good exercise if you can do, you will be ready for the next lecture, for the course, thank you.